Agramaga, Karen Corla, um, I'll ask my questions together to give ministers time to answer them together. Um, I'd imagine these would be going to between Ministers Ryan and Minister Smith. And for again, um, I'm very lucky to have known Minister Smith for quite some time. Karen Corla, we were on the County Council together, and it's um, we're very reassuring to see his professional background being used to the fore. And I'd just like to take that moment to pay him credit, indeed all credits, and indeed all HSC staff uh, for their response in this area. And I think that is often overlooked. But the questions I had, um, Ken Corla, kind of follow on from some of the questions that were asked by both um, Deputies O'Donnell and Deputies Gannon in relation to the, you know, um, the, can, we, can we get clarity and the robustness of the systems in place across every level of government? every department, yes, this involves the HSC and uh, the Department for Health, but we have to know that there is a threat for every department and we bear in mind how critically important um, these systems are. And in that respect, my, my real interest, and it hasn't been asked yet, is what is the cyber security awareness of all staff across government? individuals to see how they can uh, maintain resilience, how they can be alert to the threats, because let's be under no illusion, this isn't just an act of cybercrime, this is an act of cyber terrorism. This goes to the very heart of protecting the most vulnerable in our society, and it should be treated like this. Of course, we know this isn't a unique attack. Uh, just today, uh, the Waikato Health Board in New Zealand has been a victim of a very similar attack, and it's something that is a growing threat. And I know many deputies have warned about the need and concerns in this, and I wonder how, going forward, how do we both gather intelligence and turn that intelligence into resilience? And my final question is to query what engagement we've had with partners at an EU level and an intergovernmental level, because dealing with these threats, wherever they may come from in the world, is not something that a country can do in isolation or alone. And with that, Ken Corla, I hope I've left ample time for the ministers to dive into those issues. Come on, Thank you. Deputy Richmond. Um, Minister Smith. Thank you, Ken Corla. Uh, Deputy Richmond, you ask about the uh, you know, information that's provided to staff to, pre to prevent these, uh, these type of events from happening. And you can see a parallel with uh, public health advice that uh, it's not the Department of Public Health that protects you from, from being infected. It's the information that they provide to the public and those habits, uh, the, those hygiene habits, which in this case uh, translate to security habits. And it is the information and education about not clicking on links and about you know, using strong passwords and all, the, all those things, those messages that have to be repeated again and again and making sure that people do that and that that's audited and so on. So there is a, there's a real role for every, every staff member to, to adopt those habits. However, that said, we do have to have um, defence in depth. We have to have, we can't have a situation where an organisation ca can completely implode because somebody clicks on, on a link and so, so the, the strength in, in defence in depth and having a secure organisation goes beyond securing the endpoints. It goes beyond preventing people from getting into your organisation. Once they've penetrated, you want to make sure they can only move very slowly throughout it and that, that requires advice about how you set up your networks and again that comes back to education and the role of the National um, Cyber Security Centre is to uh, is to, to, to perform a risk analysis of these organisations and to advise on what a set of measures is to strengthen them and to provide um, incident response teams uh, when those things happen. Um, how do we get resilience? All the time we have to keep improving. It's continuous improvement, it's an arms race, you're continually being attacked and again back to the, back to the parallel with, with the real life virus which, which mutates into variants, all the time the, the computer viruses are being upgraded and are mutating and come back stronger and we need to come back stronger all the time. That's why we need, we need to triple our, our, our budget last year for, for our cyber security staff but it's going, to be, it's going to go up again next year, of course it is. The number of, of IT staff working in, in, the, in the HSE had doubled in, within two years, hundreds of millions being spent, but again, it's going to be more in the future because it is an arms race against well-funded cyber criminals. Um, who, how are we getting support and cooperation from other countries? We do it through a number of organizations, through Europol, through ENISA, and we've had direct contact from a number of European member states who have also suffered attacks from this particular crime gang. They have been, uh, they have been good enough and kind enough to share with us the information about the signs of when you can see it coming, the remedies that you can apply, and we will be offering that, that same information to the New Zealanders uh, today from, from my organisation, and I spoke to the National Cyber Security Centre about that. Thank you. Other ministers on this, no? Yeah, just, to, just to back that up, that is the yeah. key here. It, is, it has to be an international response. 
and that response in this case included uh, other governments uh, providing us with some of the uh, example of the, of the same malware and what they had done to actually protect against it. And, and that is the, the way that this works. It is a global phenomenon. It is a global problem. The nature of the internet is that it is a, uh, it has to, that it is that connected network. I think one of the key things coming out of this instant is obviously strengthening our defence systems, but also using it as an opportunity to further enhance our use of the technology while making it secure. We have to be careful here not to create a paradigm where, uh, in the, the likes of the health system, there's huge benefits, huge advantages from the use of ICT uh, uh, equipment and, uh, and new ways of doing things. One of the reasons I think we were, we've been particularly vulnerable maybe in this particular um, time is that with the incident of remote working, that very wide, diverse network of devices, uh, and often remote from, from central facilities, is by its very nature less secure. It's, it's um, uh, why these, these networks tend to be attacked. What we need to do in response to that is not recoil from the use of ICT infrastructure, but to actually double down on making it safer on design, by design building in resilience. There are, as people have said here, attacks all the time. Now, it depends what you call attack. It could be something as, 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 as a seemingly insignificant as a phishing, you know, or a, some sort of instance to try and get someone to, to link into, the, uh, to allow someone into the network. That in itself is not the key issue. It's, it's then what capability, as Mr. Smith says, has when they get within the network is the further line of defense. So it's, it's, uh, we have to be careful here not to, uh, not to miss or lose the great benefits we get from the use of this ICT infrastructure, Corlef, I may just but, ask a brief but to design in depth just defense on that, systems within. On that point, thank you. A very brief question and might allow for a brief response. And Guramina Malgut and Tara for, for, those, um, for that intervention. It's just, you both alluded to it that, as we know, this is a new variant of a known attack. So, what is the increased threat intelligence now, Guramina Malgut? Mr. Ryan? Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the increased threat intelligence? So, so all, all, the, all the time, these, uh, these um, attacks, these software attacks, are upgraded in response to, to the, the cybersecurity people putting in defences against them. It's an arms race. There's a continuing, there's a, there's a continuing battle between, between the two, and it, it's, it's something that we just, we just have to continue with. It's something that we can't fight alone. We, we have been attacked. But also, with the same and variants of this software, have attacked sites uh, successfully within the United States, the Colonial Pipeline attack, the, uh, the, the attacks within the UK, despite the fact that they have agencies at the National Security Agency, that they have GCHQ, which much wider, uh, better funded defence powers, and, despite those, and, and, and also with, with powers uh, practically of mass surveillance, and despite the fact that they are surveilling all this data coming in and out of the country and coming out of the sites, they, they still were, were hit by the by these attackers. So we can see that this is a worldwide problem and that there is a common interest in defeating this, by, which can only be done by, by the sharing of information between nation states.